everyone. Welcome back to our virtual story time here at Michigan City Public Library. My name is Mr. Dave, and today I'm joined by Mr. Jonathan. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to story time. We're going to be talking about fish today. So before we begin the stories today, I thought we could shake our hands up. Shake our hands up. Wiggle your fingers around. Put them out to the side. Put them out in front of you. Okay, is everybody ready? I have 10 little fingers and they all belong to me. I can make them do things. What do you like to see? I can shut them tight. I can open them wide. I can put them together. I can make them hide. I can make them fly high. I can make them fly low. I can fold them like this and hold them just so. Good job, everybody. Fish is Fish by Leo Leone, read with permission from Alfred A. Knopf, New York. At the edge of the woods there was a pond, and there a minnow and a tadpole swam among the weeds. They were inseparable friends. One morning the tadpole discovered that during the night he had grown two little legs. Look, he said triumphantly, look, I am a frog. Nonsense, said the minnow. How could you be a frog if only last night you were a little fish, just like me? They argued and argued until finally the tadpole said, Frogs are frogs and fish is fish. And that's that. In the weeks that followed, the tadpole grew tiny front legs and his tail got smaller and smaller. And then one day, a real frog now, he climbed out of the water and onto the grassy bank. The minnow, too, had grown and had become a full-fledged fish. He often wondered where his four-footed friend had gone, but days and weeks went by and the frog did not return. Then one day, with a happy splash that shook the weeds, the frog jumped into the pond. Where have you been? asked the fish excitedly. I have been about the world, hopping here and there, said the frog, and I have seen extraordinary things. Like what? asked the fish. Birds, said the frog mysteriously. Birds, and he told the fish about the birds, who had wings and two legs and many, many colors. As the frog talked, his friend saw the birds fly through his mind like large feathered fish. What else, asked the fish impatiently. Cows, said the frog. Cows, they have four legs, horns, eat grass, and carry pink bags of milk. And people, said the frog, men, women, children, and he talked and talked until it was dark in the pond. But the picture in the fish's mind was full of lights and colors and marvelous things, and he couldn't sleep. Ah, if he could only jump about like his friend and see that wonderful world. And so the days went by. The frog had gone, and the fish just lay there, dreaming about birds in flight, grazing cows, and those strange animals all dressed up, that his friend called people. One day he finally decided that, come what may, he too must see them. And so, with a mighty whack of his tail, he jumped clear out of the water onto the bank. He landed in the dry, warm grass, and there he lay gasping for air, unable to breathe or to move. Help! He groaned feebly. Luckily, the frog, who had been hunting butterflies nearby, saw him, and with all his strength pushed him back into the pond. Still stunned, the fish floated about for an instant. Then he breathed deeply, letting the clean, cool water run through his gills. Now he felt weightless again, and with an ever-so-slight motion of the tail, he could move to and fro, up and down as before. The sun rays reached down within the weeds and gently shifted patches of luminous color. 
This world was surely the most beautiful of all worlds. He smiled at his friend, the frog, who sat watching him from a lily leaf. You are right, he said. Fish is fish. The End Fish is Fish by Leo Leone The Whale in My Swimming Pool by Joyce Wan. This book is read with permission by Macmillan Publishers. Race you to the pool. Whoa, a whale? Mom, there's a whale in my swimming pool. Great, honey, don't forget about sunscreen. Sunscreen on a whale? Okay, I'm going to close my eyes and count to ten. And when I'm done, you'd better be gone. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah. Maybe you just need a little help. Yeah. Why my pool? Why not the pool next door? They have the best pool on the block. How about a game? Fetch. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. Wouldn't you rather swim with other whales? I'll give you my allowance. What if we take turns? Tag, you're it. Arr, this is hopeless. How will I ever get this whale out of my pool? I'll never get to go swimming ever again. I give up. Wait a minute. I have an idea. Wait here. I'll be right back. Well, maybe this is not so bad after all. Nap time. Coming, Mom. Oh, great. He snores. The Whale in My Swimming Pool by Joyce Wan. One, two, three, four, five. The Rainbow Fish by Marcus Pfister. Read with permission from North South Books. A long way out in the deep blue sea, there lived a fish. Not just an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue and green and purple, with sparkling silver scales among them. The other fish were amazed at his beauty. They called him Rainbow Fish. Come on, Rainbow Fish, they would call. Come and play with us. But the rainbow fish would just glide past, proud and silent, letting his scales shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow fish, he called, wait for me. Please give me one of your shiny scales. They are so wonderful and you have so many. You want me to give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are? cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me. Shocked, the little blue fish swam away. He was so upset, he told all his friends what had happened. From then on, no one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They turned away when he swam by. What good were the dazzling, shimmering scales with no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. One day, he poured out his troubles to the starfish. I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anybody like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish, but if you go beyond the coral reef, to a deep cave, you will find the wise octopus. Maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found the cave. It was very dark inside and he couldn't see anything. Then suddenly two eyes caught him in their glare and the octopus emerged from the darkness. I have been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. 
The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. I can't, the rainbow fish started to say, but the octopus had already disappeared into a dark cloud of ink. Give away my scales? My beautiful shining scales? Never. How could I ever be happy without them? Suddenly he felt the light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. The rainbow fish wavered. Only one very, very small shimmery scale, he thought. Well, maybe I wouldn't miss just one. Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Thank you, thank you very much, the little blue fish bubbled playfully as he tucked the shiny scale in among his blue ones. A rather peculiar feeling came over the rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little blue fish swim back and forth with his new scale glittering in the water. The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing, so it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right, and the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales, he at last felt at home among the other fish. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shining scale left. His most prized possession had been given away, yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come and play with us. Here I come, said the rainbow fish, and happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. The End Rainbow Fish by Marcus Pfister Be sure to visit the library to pick up this week's take-home story time craft.